So today's plant obsession, another group of tuberous sundews. I talked about before how there's four different groups of um, tuberous drosera within the main tuberous genre. There's the vining ones, that's like Macrantha, Aramea, Ingementa. Those ones can grow like five to six feet and clamor all over the place. Um, there's rosetted ones, Rosilata, Whitakaria, Barrens. Um, then there's your like semi-erect kind of Peltata, Riculata, Menziesii group. And then there's the Stoloniferae complex. And they're a little more difficult to summarize, I would say. Um, this is a classic Stoloniferae there. Uh, this is probably, I mean, I just have a very special place in my heart for this group of sundews. They're just so beautiful and magical, unlike any other sundews. Um, I love the way they unfurl. You can see they just kind of unfurl with these kind of sp um, spiraling, um, fractaling things. They also can sometimes have like their own very strange like um, jelly on the new stems as they're opening up, which I've, I always have a hard time finding when I want to talk about it, but I've seen it many times. And the mucilage is also really thick. The mucilage is what we call the sticky glue on here. And most sundews, it would just kind of get all over your finger and stay on there. On this, it mostly sticks to the leaf, which I think is because it gets rained on so much. These are winter growers in Australia. They'd be getting rain all winter long, just like we do here. And so I think the, mu the thicker mucilage probably keeps that from being washed away. Anyways, Stolonifera comes in a few different forms. That's the mini form, but there's also a giant form that gets closer to a foot tall. I don't see it around here yet. Maybe it's not up yet. Um, and then it used to have a whole bunch of different subspecies. There was Stolonifera subspecies this and subspecies that. And then Alan Lowry at a certain point gave those all names and elevated them all up to their own species. Um, one of those, well, this one was never a Stolonifera, it was always its own species, but this is Ramalosa. And you can see they have a very similar uh, leaf shape, kind of like a little mouse's ear. Uh, but Ramalosa is a super sweet plant. We have two different forms of that, a white flowered and a pink flowered. That's the pink. The white is actually right here. And we've grown this one for like 30 years. Uh, that's a very, very compact white flowered plant. Maybe someday someone will call that its own species because they are quite different. Um, but that's not my job. Uh, the other one is Parecta, which makes straight stems that stick straight up, usually non-branching. They are branching now because we're getting this huge show of flowers on them. Like many tuberous drosera, their flowers are sweetly fragrant, like jasmine, which is just so amazingly and special. Here's another regular Stolonifera, beautiful little red and green Christmas Stolonifera coming up right there. The other one is Rupacola, Drosera Rupacola, which used to be Stolonifera subspecies compacta. Um, comes in a few different colors. We have the golden green. This is a bronzy form. There's even a slightly darker red form. Again, really beautiful fragrant flowers. To me, the Rupacola flowers smell like corn tortillas or flip flops in the 80s. <laughs> some of you will know those smells. Um, some of you yeah, know what flip flops smelled like in a dime store in the 80s. <laughs> Anyways, that's mostly the, the complex. The only one I don't have here is um, Prostrata, and that one's very thin and lays perfectly along the sand and does not raise up at all. Uh, very different, but it's also probably one of the more finicky ones to grow, and so I think at some point it shuffled away on us, but sometimes things do.